Hi, how are you? Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Yulia and I am super happy you're here. On this channel, I like talking about how to build strong and positive relationship with yourself, how to make peace with your body and mind, and how to find the self-acceptance, self-love and self-appreciation to yourself. Today I wanted to talk about the book that constantly inspires me to draw my attention to my true self when it comes to choosing the right goal. I have this book in paper version and I often go back to it when I need a little boost of inspiration when it comes to acknowledging my true feelings and figuring out if this goal really suits me and if this is something that truly makes me happy. The book I'm talking about is Desire Map by Daniel Laporte and this book completely changed my perception on how to know and recognize the goals that are aligned with yourself and that fulfill the most important spheres in my life. And there are several main takeaways that I would love to share with you. We can have multiple goals in our life and that's totally fine, but our main intention, our main goal should always be feeling good. We should always feel good no matter what we plan, dream or desire and only when we feel good we can build the life that will be aligned with our true selves. There is one important mistake that we constantly do uh, when it comes to figuring the goal for ourselves or just living the life we want to live is we take into consideration other people's assumptions. These assumptions usually consider things that are good or bad for us, healthy or unhealthy, right or wrong. The best thing that we can do is we can break this connection between ourselves and people's expectations of how we are supposed to live our life. The goal that we set should be first of all in harmony with ourselves and not with someone else's expectations because we only have one life and there is only one right way to live it and this is when we are happy positive and fulfilled. That's why whatever goal it is, it should never drain our energy, it should give us energy. But when we try to live according to someone else's expectations, it is something that drains a lot of energy from us. Another mistake that we constantly make is we put ourselves in a very stressed state of mind by setting very strict goals. And what we can do here, we can focus on the desire to act towards this goal instead of focusing on the end result. For example, I want 10,000 followers on my Instagram. So instead of me focusing on this number, I focus how much I love to share and create the content. So basically, instead of freaking out about the future, just try to draw your attention back into the present moment and enjoy these tiny little steps that you do towards your goal. We can also put it this way. We should focus more on inspiration other than motivation. Inspiration is something that we have in the present moment. So when we enjoy, when I'm enjoying uh, writing the content and sharing this content, I'm very inspired and I'm very uh, present oriented. Versus when I'm focused on motivation, that would be X amount of subscribers on my Instagram page. I am focusing on the future moment and I'm drawing my attention back from the present moment. What I can do here is instead of thinking whether this particular post is gonna bring me any amount of subscribers, I'm just gonna enjoy the moment of sharing the message that I want to share. I oftentimes notice when I get stressed about the amount of subscribers or for example that this amount of subscribers is not rising, I get very stressed. I feel like I'm supposed to do better and this is something that prevents me from fully enjoying the moment and fully engaging in the process of creating content.
very important takeaway is that we have to decide to achieve success no matter what. Because the universe gives us rewards not for the amount of effort or for the amount of time that we put into achieving the goal. The universe gives us rewards for the positive emotions that we are experiencing on the way of achieving this goal. That's why one of the key things here is to trust the process no matter what's happening. The thoughts that we are sending to the universe or that we are sending to our subconscious self are extremely important when we want to achieve any goal. And obviously not only thinking about it, but believing in what we are thinking. If we are genuinely doing something that feels good, we will be very successful if we send the right message to the universe, if we stay positive and we, if we are not distracted on the roadblocks. Another very important thing that I read in this book is that intentions are way more important than the end result. If we're doing something in the present moment that really makes us happy and brings us lots of positivity, we should be very intentional to doing it on the regular basis in our everyday life and try to do it as much as possible. Maybe sometimes we don't have time to do it every single day, but we should still be very intentional about this fact that this thing really makes us happy and we should be intentional in trying to implement it as much as, as possible into our life. Obviously, it's impossible to just suddenly stop thinking about the end result. The thoughts about the end results will still going to be in our head. But the moment we try to let go of the anxiety and all those expect expectations and assumptions that we have about this end result, we will feel way more peaceful and we will have way more joy and pleasure of going towards this goal. The next takeaway is that we should always be grateful for what already makes us feel good. Uh, we shouldn't only think about what we want, but we should also think about what we already have. For example, instead of me thinking that I want 10,000 subscribers on my Instagram page, I can think that I already have 200 subscribers and this number is going to grow because this is something that I truly enjoy doing. Creating content and sharing this content is something that brings me pleasure. So I just choose to trust the universe here and I take my time and I only think about how much fun it is for me to create and upload this content. The idea behind it is that when we release this grip in achieving this goal, we will start breathing free and we will start growing more actively because we reduce the amount of stress that is connected to achieving the goal. And of course, the main takeaway of the whole book and the core idea of this whole book is the desired feelings themselves. The author makes a very good point that we should analyze every single sphere of our life and we should try to understand how we want to feel. So basically, we, we should try to do the list of our desired feelings and it is five to seven feelings that are in our main focus. So every time we choose a goal, we go through the list of our desired feelings and we try to estimate this goal. Will this goal make us feel aligned with our desired feelings? If this is not happening, then probably it is the wrong goal or maybe it's not the right time or maybe the way we decided to uh, achieve this goal should be a little bit different. But anyway, yes, the author gives a huge list of uh, the feelings and the author helps us understand how exactly we want to feel by asking lots of questions and giving different exercises to estimate and identify the most important spheres for our life that we want to focus on the first place. I truly believe that concentrating on our desired feelings is something that will easily help us guide the way in our life. Even before reading this book, I remember I used to make myself go to the gym and I used to go uh, three to four times a week and I was working out for two hours every single time and I really was pushing myself and I did not enjoy it at all. So since I stopped going to the gym and I started doing home workouts and I started implementing more yoga, I found that I get way more fun and way more pleasure for my body out of this type of movement. If I knew this concept before, I would just estimate how does going to the gym make me feel? And I would understand that this is something that doesn't make me feel good. The same thing, I would estimate how yoga or how gentle movement in general makes me feel. And then I will understand that this is something that is truly for me. And this is something that I want to do and always keep in my life. I honestly can't recommend this book enough. I have it in paper version and I will definitely go back to it 
not once in my life and I will keep doing the exercises. Also, an important thing that no matter what desired feelings we have right now, these desired feelings are going to be changing throughout the life. They will be changing because we are achieving certain goals and we are fulfilling these fears of our life. So yes, this is the book that you can definitely come back to and if you have an opportunity, you should definitely get a paper version of it and do all the exercises that the author suggests. This is all I wanted to say about this book. I really hope that this video gave you a little bit of inspiration and maybe you will get your hands on this book and just read. You don't have to read every single chapter. Just look through it and pick the chapters you like and just try to think what desired feelings you want to have in your life and these desired feelings are going to help you push through anything, achieve any goal that you have in mind and just be happy and positive overall in your daily life. If you want to know more how to shift to a positive mindset, how to start loving and accepting yourself for a wonderful human that you are, check out these videos. And that being said, I hope you have a positive day, a positive week and a positive life and I will talk to you soon. Bye!